Hi my friends, welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, I hope you're all keeping very well, painting lovely pictures out there. I hope you're doing fantastic work and I know you are. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to paint something different. Some flowers. Sunflowers to be exact. Some lovely sunflowers. I thought, why not just mix it up a bit? Go away from landscapes, leave landscapes just for one or two weeks. Maybe do one or two still lives. And I'm going to do a lovely big vase of sunflowers. Um, this is, was requested by my good friend Janelle. Um, she's been asking me to do this for a while and I've just been so busy. I haven't had the, the, the time in my tutorial schedule to get it done. But I'm doing it for you today, Janelle. I hope you enjoy it. One very important thing about this tutorial is the photograph Janelle sent me. Here it is. Now, that photograph is the sunflowers. You can see uh, there's a lot of green in the entire composition. Uh, if you look at the background, it's a very sort of a luminous kind of a green color. Uh, it just seems to kind of clash with the rest of the flowers and stuff like that. They almost seem to, I suppose, fade into the background slightly color wise. I really want to make these sunflowers pop. So I've decided to make the background a dark color. Now, if you look at my canvas here, I just gave this a kind of a tint, let's say. I used a very kind of a dark purple color, um, very wet, and I kind of let, it's still not dry completely, but it's almost completely dry to touch. I just put a very dark purple on, um, and put hints of burnt sienna, a little bit of magenta, just kind of mix it across with the brush very, very loosely and softened it together, and a little bit of light, um, mauve than our light blue even just kind of coming across the bottom to suggest the, the 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 table or the surface the vase is on i just think by doing this it'll make those sunflowers really jump out of the canvas and we can really get some nice strong rich yellows and orangey colors in those flowers so i hope you don't mind janelle the one you sent me is really is beautiful it's really is beautiful but i just find for the composition um there seems to be a lot of kind of green tones throughout the photograph um, the leaves are green and i find the yellow of the sunflowers seems to be almost clashing with the background as well because there's a lot of a green in the background so it's sort of it's it's not really standing out it's not jumping out so what you want is for sunflowers to really jump out from the background so a dark background is always much much better for sunflowers so let's go i'm going to try to have a bit of fun this will probably be two parts because there's a lot of work in this. Lots of leaves, um, foliage, the vase, that kind of thing. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's go and have a bit of fun with this. Lots of palette knife work as well. Get some lot, lots of thick paint on the canvas for those leaves. And let's see if we can make these sunflowers just really jump off of the canvas. Okay? I'll be right back. Grab your stuff if you want to follow me along. All right, so let's do it. Let's have a bit of fun. There's a reference photograph for you. I put up the original photograph because all I'm going to copy from this is the vase and the flowers, nothing else. You can see there's a lot of green in the background and I don't know, it it just doesn't seem to kind of catch my eye so much. Um, I think a darker background like this with some rich, bright orangey yellow flowers and petals will really kind of grab your attention, I think. Uh, so let's let's have a bit of fun. Now, I was planning originally on doing a kind of a black vase. But I'm not sure I'm kind of to and fro. I'm kind of going back and forward. I'm just not sure. I think I'll just try and do something similar to what's there. So look, I'm going to tell you what colours I have on my palette. I hope you can see everything okay. Titanium white, cadmium yellow, pale, lamp black, burnt cyanide, burnt umber, cadmium red, naples yellow, magenta, phthalo blue. We might not need so much of these. It's just for shadows more than anything else. So let's go. Medium brush. I'm just going to paint loosely the vase. Dampen that brush just a little. Let's try some burnt umber. And let's try some black. And then I'm going to take a touch of white. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm really not sure about the vase. Um, I'm just worried it's not going to work with the background. Everything I'm doing here, you see, is kind of to do with the background as well. 
let's just try it. Let's just pick a center point. Let's go around here. I'll maybe take a touch of Naples yellow into this and maybe a touch of magenta. What I want to do, what what I want to do in this background is complement the background with the colours as well. So maybe a slightly browny pinky vase with some darks and lights might work. Um look, let's just go for it. Let's go out like this. Again, I'm not going to try and copy the photograph exactly. Might have to make that a bit bigger. It's just an impression of a vase. That's really all of this. We can change this as we go, can't we? There's no right or wrong in this. It's completely, it's completely up to us. I just want to get the scale of this vase done just right first because everything else then is dependent on this. You don't want a very, very big vase. You don't want a very, very small vase. Let's take some Naples yellow and let's take a touch of burnt sienna and a touch of white. I'm kind of leaning more towards burnt sienna actually with some white only for some highlights on this. You can see now I'm, I'm using a fairly thick paint on this. And I'm really not even too worried about getting the vase perfect either. I'm going to take a little bit of black in there. I'm going to make it slightly bigger. I think it needs a bigger vase. I think the vase needs to be just that little bit bigger. There we go. Now this is really just the very early stages. I, I'm going to be adding lights and shadows and all that kind of thing onto this. So, look, don't... Don't be worried about trying to get this absolutely perfect first time. Okay? Really, it's it's going to take time. Now, oh, put a bit of grey. Now, I'm actually going to go a bit bigger with the vase. Because, again, I keep looking at the, the size of this vase compared to the background. I don't want a very small vase, to be quite honest. I don't want something that's just going to disappear once the flowers go on. Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber. Let's try a bit of that. A nice, strong, strong colour. Realistically, you can make this vase Whatever colour you like. It's completely up to yourself, really. I'm going to go in out with a bit of blue and magenta. Let's try and get some nice purple shades on this. I'm going to say the light is coming from the top left. So I'm going to make this nice and dark down here. So I'm just starting to build up my layers bit by bit. A little bit more blue and a little bit more magenta. Let's put that rich shadowy shade on there. Again, I'm being careful. I don't want any greens on this, so I'm just adding plenty of magenta into that colour because a blue with a brown will go kind of a greeny colour. So plenty of pink into this. And this really for me now is only experimental. I'm experimenting with colours. I'll eventually get the colour that I like on the vase. But it's going to take time. Um, you could be here for ages and ages, you know, trying different colours. It just depends on what you like yourself. So look, I'm going to go in with some cadmium red and cadmium yellow. Again, just to try different things out, that's all. Uh, maybe a little white. Uh, touch of magenta as well. I'm just... I'm just kind of throwing caution to the wind here now and just trying something just to see what happens. Okay, that's kind of creating a nice light point for me. Um, I might take some burnt cyanide 
and cadmium red pop a little bit of that in this here and there i'm sort of just dancing around with my brush now uh trying to just create different types of shades on the vase i don't want to create just a solid shape on the vase and solid color um you know it's it's evolving all the time it's it's changing constantly put a little bit of burnt sienna and a burnt umber down here like that perhaps then i'll take a little bit of black let's take a little some little touch of black pop a little bit of black down here soften it upwards at an angle so we're creating a curvature on the vase this for me is all about grabbing lots of color and just putting lots of color on the vase i will come back and put some real bright highlights look let's do it now let's try some very bright rich highlights let's take some hmm let me see do you know what i'm going to do actually i was going to do a bright yellow there but you know what i'm going to do you see this is how i like to paint i change my mind as i go i'm going to take some magenta and some blue lots of white i'm going to go with a very bright and a lilac and violet up there I'm trying all of these different things as I go. For me, this type of painting, it's not um, instant. What I mean by that is, this is not something I'm going to paint and get right every time. I'm, I'm going to add colors as I go and see what happens and this is really where the learning comes into it um if you're like just starting and you're unsure this for me is the best way to get find your feet in painting i would say because you're putting on colors you're starting to see how the colors interact with each other and you're learning about how they make different shades as they're blending together I think that's very important in painting because you're never going to get it right the first time i don't think it's impossible to get something right the first time so that's why i like painting like this now that has a nice light on it doesn't it i think it has a beautiful light and to complement the yellows of the flowers what i'm going to do is just on that light i'm going to take a very bright pink maybe a touch of cadmium red or magenta and I just want to complement the yellows and pinks because yellows and pinks go lovely together so i'm just going to put a touch of pink as well just to try and complement those yellow flowers later on in the painting see so look just a touch of pink perhaps just here and there a light pink And the brush, the small flat brush is kind of, it's giving the vase even some shape and uh, texture as well. So how's that? That's quite a nice, that's quite a nice vase, I think. I, 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 I think it's quite nice. Um, to add a final punch of highlight on this, I'm going to take a touch of cadmium yellow with white. And this is the final, real, final kind of burst of sunlight hitting the vase. Um, whether it be a window or a light or a lamp or something this is just kind of the final you see what i mean i'm just kind of hitting it with, with the brush without softening too much and that's where you have to be very careful when painting vases and things like that and um, just punch it stick it on like that and leave it try not to go softening colors in too much that's fine i'm leaving that I think it's absolutely fine. I might just soften this slightly with my blender brush, ever so slightly. Just a tiny, tiny bit, following the shapes, following the curves, just to soften it a touch. And what I might do as well is maybe just put a touch of that here and there. You see that sort of as if it's catching the light. On a certain point and let's just soften that in i know now i've already spent far too much time on the vase i know i have but i really want to 
get this part just right. It's, it's very important because this sets the scene. It sets the tone for the rest of the painting, I think. Maybe I'm wrong, but... I think getting the colour of the vase just right, it really makes a difference to the painting later on. The next thing I'm going to do is the centre of the sunflowers, just to give us some reference points. Do you understand? So let me get a flat brush here now, any, anything at all, and stamping that. It's a cyanide, burnt cyanide with a bit of cadmium yellow mixed in as well. Let's take some burnt cyanide and lots of cadmium yellow because burnt cyanide is a much stronger colour than cadmium yellow. So you need a lot more cadmium yellow in this rather than burnt cyanide. I've put too much in, but I'll just keep adding yellow until I get the shade I want, you see? Um, so what I tend to do when painting things like this, flowers and stuff like that, is I put the centres of the flowers up first. And that gives me some nice reference points and I can see how it's falling and all that kind of thing. So I'm going to put one. You see this one around here, look. Put one around there. And we have another one kind of up around here, don't we? And my background is still a little damp. When I put this paint on the background, it's kind of moving into the background paint slightly. So I'm just being careful not to go rubbing too much. And I've another little one sort of popping around here. Like that. It's just reference points, that's all. It's not actual, I'm not painting actual flowers. Um, so we've that, we've that, we've another small one showing here somewhere. Again, just very loosely. I have a big one then. There's a big one up high, isn't there? Um, so we've flowers here. The big one goes like that. Okay. So you can see now how this is allowing me to gauge where I'm putting the flowers. It's a very, very good idea to do this, I think, when you're painting flowers. And it seems to be dark on the outside and getting darker as it comes in. So let's put on this final one over here. I'll take a touch of white in the mix for this one over here. Um, I don't want to go too far out, so it's around here, isn't it? Something like that, isn't it? <clears throat> Take a bit of cyanide, a bit of cyanide into that. So I now know where my flowers are going to be. I think this one needs to be a bit bigger up here, doesn't it? This seems to have a huge presence on the canvas, this one, doesn't it? And then you can just go around, you can make these slightly bigger if you like. Completely up to yourself, but I don't want to make them very, very big. I don't want to overpower the entire painting with the centres. Because it's easy to make them bigger, it's much more difficult to make them smaller. Because trying to make these smaller will be ne nearly impossible. So um, just take your time. Be a little cautious. So we had those done. I'm now going to move to a smaller brush and start putting in the darks around the edges of some of these. So I'm going to start with a dark in the centre. We take a small little brush, warm brush, a flat brush, anything at all. Take some burnt umber, and I'm going to just start with the centre, putting in the centres first like this. And then it's going to soften as it comes out, isn't it? So let's just dab, 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 dab. Like that. Let's try that again. Okay, and I put another one here. There is a lot of red in some of these as well, which I really love. There's a lot of rich red in around the centres of these, which is wonderful colour. I want to make these really rich. 
So I'm going to just start going into some cadmium red and a little burnt sienna, perhaps. And I'm going to start putting a little touch of that cadmium red as well in around. And then dab, 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 sort of dabbing it all together very gently. I hope you can see this okay now on camera. I know it might be a little bit dark for you. Um, so I hope it shows up okay. Go around to this one here. Little cadmium yellow with some cadmium red, I would say is a nice mix. And go around that brown first with that mix, nice warm kind of an orangey mix and then stab it and soften it into the centers. And I, to be honest, no, I really want to take my time with this painting because I want this to be nice. I want to do a nice painting. I don't want to be doing just a kind of a rushed um, attempt. Do you understand what I mean? And I know you probably find this a little boring, perhaps just, you know, messing around with little centers like this. Um, but really, these will, these will set the tone. These, these are very important, they really are. Um, so look, what I'm going to do is take some black and some red. And I'm just going to go to the centres of these and dab some darkness in around the centre. And I'm just dabbing it and allowing it to soften to the outside colour. See what I mean? I'm just allowing it to mix in with the colours around it. And we have another one here. You can of course just use a small pointy brush for this if you like. You don't have to go with big brushes like this. If you're comfortable with a small pointy brush, then just use a small pointy brush. No problem. Whatever helps and works for you. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy enough with this so far. I'll stand back and take a quick look at this. Now I'm going to start hitting this with some real rich highlights. When I say highlights, what I mean is light coming down, catching one side of these. <clears throat> and this is probably the important part for me. Getting this right will determine the rest of the painting, the light source of the rest of the painting, um, which is very important. Every painting I find uh, when I'm painting, it needs to have some kind of a light source. The light needs to come from somewhere, overhead, left, right, wherever. It needs to have some kind of a source in order to make it sort of come alive, even in a landscape. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to put the light up here on the top left. And just kind of dab it along. And this is slow, this takes a bit of time, but if you get this right, it really is worth it, I promise. Take your time, look, little dab of light coming along and catching one side. And those small little lights actually will make a huge difference to the painting. Even just to these little centers, that little touch of light will make a huge difference, believe me. I'll take a bit more yellow in this now. I'm, I'm just using paint on its own. Um, just paint. Nice thick paint, go around the edge like that, and then kind of just leave it soften inwards slightly. And I can almost tell at this stage that it's going to look good when it's finished with these centers. You can sort of start to see the lights, can't you? Um, we have a little bit of light down here, but it's, it's called a reflective light. So it's reflecting light from a surface onto this flower down here. 
So you have natural directional light and you also have reflective light. Reflective light is, say, for instance, the reflection from this, that light source is bouncing back up and hitting something else, perhaps the underside of a petal or something. That's called reflective highlights. That's what I like to call it. Um, it's very, very important. It just a tiny little bit makes a big difference. Now, a little bit more cadmium yellow and titanium white here. Just to, again, accentuate the light, you see? We're catching some sunlight. Although I don't think it's sunlight. It could be, it could be anything, but it's, it's a nice light and that's all that matters. I'm gonna put a little bit of cadmium red in around here as well. All these little subtle warm colors add to the effect. Little touches of cadmium red, little touches of burnt sienna. They really do add to the effect that we're trying to get. One last little thing I might do with this now, and that is um, maybe get some black. And just in around the middle, dab a little touch of black here and there. Just to define the centers just a little bit. I know they're not completely black on the photograph, but I think this will help define the centers just that little bit more. I'm going to get some burnt sienna and go down here. So I'm going to darken this kind of bottom section just slightly. I'm going to darken the bottoms down around the sides here, just a little bit. That will accentuate the light side and make it look even more light. Now, you could probably say I've already spent too much time just on the centers, but I think looking at that, it was worth it. Now, a little bit of titanium white and cadmium yellow pale. I hope you're enjoying this now, John L. I hope I'm just... You know, I want to take my time and do it nice for you. I don't want to be just rushing along. I hope you're enjoying it. Please do let me know if, if you're enjoying this and if it's what you expected. But I certainly am enjoying this right now. It's quite nice. It's lovely. It's already given me a lovely feeling. Does that make sense? So let's take a look. Yeah, I'm quite happy with those. What I might do is just, perhaps with a bigger, slightly bigger brush, is soften them ever so gently, just a bit. I might just soften the highlights just a little bit more. Just go around the entire flower, because you can see on a sunflower, these centers, the very, very fine little dots, that's what they look like. So not to have them too sort of uh, thick and chunky, but more soft like this. I think that's a much better feeling. There we go. And I can see just one or two small, small things I would like to do before I move on. I'm going to take a little burnt umber and black, or even look, just a bit of black on its own is, is just as well. Little tiny bit of black. I just want to create center just like that, you see? Just a little dark line in the center. Because you can I can see little more solid shapes and lines in around the center now even that is just enough i think i'm going to stop at that i i'm going to change my tissue because it's it's quite bad isn't it let's change our tissues make sure the brushes are nice and clean and i might i'm, I'm going to start some of the petals 
and then we'll call it part one finished. I, I'm not going to try and force myself to paint too much too fast in this picture because looking at it now, it's, it looks like it's coming on very, very nicely. And if I start rushing this, it's going to just become um, too rushed and too messy. So look, what I'm going to do is start with some petals. I'm going to start off with, uh, let me see, I'm going to get a small... A nice, very small filbert. I have a lovely small filbert brush here, soft synthetic filbert. And I'm going to start putting in some of the smaller petals on some of these. Now, bear in mind, the background is still not completely dry. So I need to be careful. I don't want greens. Let's just start off with um, a soft yellow, a warm yellow first. I'm going to mix a warm yellow and leave the final highlights till the very end. <clears throat> So I'm going to go cadmium yellow with a touch of cadmium red. A very soft orangey yellow. Okay, it's not pure orange. It's a very soft, subtle orange. Just keep adding some red in there as you need. And let's take plenty of paint and just start putting on little suggestions of you know some of the darker ones now you can see what's happening already i can see i don't know if you can see i can see what's happening already is because yellows are very translucent <clears throat> the background color is showing through and that's what's happening so it's almost looking like a bit of green or something because that dark purple background. So I may have to add some Naples yellow into this. Cadmium yellow is very, very um, translucent. So it's good to mix maybe a touch of white or Naples yellow with it, just to keep the colors. Now you see that's sticking a little better, isn't it? And I really only want to use the tip of the brush. And bear in mind, looking at this, I'm only painting, I'm kind of looking at some of the darker shades. All right. These are just the darker shades. I'm going to be putting lots of brighter colours over these later on. So not to worry. This is just the kind of darker tones that I'm painting. And in fact, even sometimes when you're doing this, I I don't even look at the reference photograph a lot of the time. Um, a lot of the time, I just sort of make it my own and I paint it myself. But just firstly, getting these warm colours in, I think is very important. Oh, I might have to take a bit more cadmium red in this and burnt sienna because that yellow is just so translucent. It's kind of just showing right through to the background underneath. So I'm doing all of this part of the painting very loosely. You see what I mean? And when it comes to doing the highlights then, I really refine the brush strokes and get nice points and all that kind of thing. Um, but for now, it's just really just to get some spontaneous shapes in there. Look, just don't try and worry about painting it all exactly perfect the first time. It's not going to happen. Just, especially with flowers, I like to just start off with a few loose brush strokes like that and then build, build the colours. These now are going to be much brighter and much more yellow soon. But doing it like this and not, you know, not trying to be too perfect with it, I think is, is much easier to work going forward when you do something like this because 
first of all, it helps your composition, it allows you to see the composition, where everything is, what the colours are doing. Um, second of all, it just allows you to judge your colours and see if you're going wrong somewhere, uh, hopefully or not, but it can kind of allow you to see where you're going wrong and what you can change. So I'm happy now with this so far. I, it's a nice composition. I can see it has a nice balance to the painting. There's nothing too far over hanging down on one side or anything like that. Um, the colours are nice against the background. The centres are looking good. I will darken them all later again, maybe just bits and pieces. But I'm kind of, I'm, I'm fairly happy with how this is going so far. I need to just fill in a lot of this one here. The problem, of course, when painting flowers is filling in the spaces in between, which is all foliage. Now, there's not a lot, a lot of foliage showing in this picture. A lot of it is sort of hidden behind leaves and stuff like that, or petals. Um, but, you see, just like that. Um, sudden little brush strokes like that can really, can really sort of bring something to life, can't it? You see the way that just kind of almost jumped. The minute I put that in, that solid brush stroke there, it just kind of, that little flick, it really sort of... You see, it sort of just grabs your eye. It just really... Um, we have a lot of green up there. I'm going to put in... I will be putting all little, you know, points on these petals and all that kind of stuff. So don't worry about that. And as I said earlier, and as I keep saying, this is only just kind of the beginning of the petals and the flowers. This is just the very beginning. Um, you know, I will be putting a lot more lights and all that kind of stuff into this in the end this is going to be much much fuller um so like for example we've another one here now that i missed i think i might put another one just here like that burnt sienna cadmium red cadmium yellow All of these darker colours, a lot of them will be gone later. So you have to bear that in mind. What I'm doing is just filling the canvas. I'm filling. It's like a painter, a decorator, filling the cracks of a wall, getting ready for the final colour. I'm just kind of filling my, my flowers in, just so I can see where the petals are going, the direction of the petals. And from there, then, you can decide okay uh, is this one working is that one not working all that kind of stuff and that's that's my process for painting flowers basically if you have your own way of doing it then perfect try that way but i like to keep a scene like this nice and loose i don't like to focus and go in and try and paint every single little one individually with you know a tiny brush for me that's just it's very laborious that's what i would say that's the word i'm going to use today laborious i like to be free you know i i like to be free and just have some fun i don't want to be sitting here for three hours painting a few petals that's not the way i paint let's go The petals on a sunflower are very sort of, how would you say it, they're, they're kind of, they're their own bosses, aren't they? Sunflower petals. They go where they want to go, and that's it. You know what I mean? It's very sort of like that. They just go where they want, and they won't be told otherwise. So allow, allow the petals to go where they want.
allow them to have some freedom. Now I'm going to put another small center in this. It needs a little bit of a center, doesn't it? Let's get some burnt sienna. Like that. And a bit of black, perhaps. And this little touch of cadmium red. Look, let's pop a little touch of cadmium red in there as well. Just to help. Okay. Hmm. It's time, I think, to start brightening colours. I want to start putting a lot more yellowy shades in here. I have this yellow, it's just a bit of kind of an orangey colour mixed in with it, but it's mostly yellow anyway. Just lots of thick paint. And let's start lightening some of these. And the Filbert brush is very good at this. It just has that natural curve to it. And although, even on the photograph, it does look quite like a kind of a messy sort of arrangement, um, you know, you can really grab the light in little areas just like that, you see, and that really that then really just catches your eye, does, doesn't it? I think it does. So again, a couple of bright highlights. Here, for example. And a couple, perhaps just up there. So we're starting to get some direction of light, aren't we? You can start, begin to see there's where the light is actually starting to come from. And it's the top left hand corner. This one. As well, okay. A little bit of light catching the top of that. And a couple of nice little touches of it here and there. Just remember when you're doing this, if you're if, if you're painting this as well, um, try to be just loose and free, okay? You see the way I'm just flicking my brush from the outside in, creating these little. little highlights on the petals just so it's all coming from one point overhead does that make sense that's what i'm trying to sort of achieve in this painting i suppose you could say um, it's all coming from a point Okay, uh, just one or two just here. Now, I will be doing lots of fine work with my pointy brush as well. But this is, this is okay for now. It's, 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 we're getting there. Okay, now I'm going to stop at that. I'm going to leave it at that as part one finished because I could quite happily sit here for another two hours painting because I'm enjoying it. I really am enjoying this. But I find stopping and then just looking at what you have. How do you feel about it? Is it, is it doing what you want it to do? Are the colours okay? Is the shape all right? That's a good way to uh, work, I think. Now, what I'm going to do is a little bit of orange. I'm just going to cast a tiny 
reflection of an orange down onto this down here, okay? Now it's it's already thick paint, so it might be tricky to do this, but I want to just cast a little touch of um, a kind of an orangey, deep orangey color down onto the vase. Again, just to pick up some shades from the petals. Does that make sense? I won't overdo it. I won't go absolutely crazy with this, but I think it just gives you a nice little impression of the light from those petals hitting the vase. Now, a little bit of deep purple for over here. I'm just going to pop a little deep purple over on this side. Just to really give that a nice deep shadow over there on this side. Magenta and blue. Lots of each. Give it nice and thick look. Put it nice and thick on there. There we go. And finally, just a bit of black on this corner. I want this corner to be really dark. How's that? Part one is finished, my friends. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Now, let me just turn the camera. There we go. I'm very happy with that so far. I must, I must invest in a decent jig for this camera. It's very, very awkward. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed part one. I'll be back very, very soon with part two in the next... Uh, I should have it uploaded by tomorrow or something like that, but you will see part one. I hope you're enjoying it as we go. Thank you so much for uh, watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't done so, please do. Um, it means a lot. And um, let me know what you think, Jonel. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for the reference photograph, my friend. And I will be right back uh, with part two. Don't go anywhere. Happy painting.